Welcome to a brand new series titled The Parables of Jesus. For the next coming few weeks, we'll be talking about the different parables that Jesus shared in his word. Welcome to New Dawn Ministries. TV. So you will have noticed that in the Gospels, uh, Jesus tend to use parables to uh, teach his disciples and all those who are listening to him. And a parable is really a story that aims to illustrate a very deep spiritual truth and I believe that in these parables that Jesus had shared there's so much wisdom and value that we can extract from them. In the next coming few weeks we will be talking about different parables that Jesus shared and most importantly we'll be extracting some of the most important lessons that we can apply in our lives. Hallelujah. So tonight we are talking about the shrewd manager. It's found in the book of Luke chapter 16 and I'll be reading from verse 1 and it says here, Jesus told his story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money so the employer called him in and said, what is it I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, Now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches. And, I do, um, and I'm too proud to beg. Ah, I know how to ensure that I will have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I am fired. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is an account of this hypothetical story that Jesus had shared. But in this story, there's packed so much wisdom that we can apply in our own lives. And the first thing that I want to extract from this parable is the fact that we will all have to give an account of our actions. The manager was working for this rich man. And this rich man, of course, represent God. And the manager represent us. And the resources that this manager was managing is our time, is our resources, and it's also our talent. And in this parable, Jesus gave us a glimpse that all of us one day will stand before God and will have to give an account of our actions. Whether it's how we use our time, how we use our resources, and how we use our talents. God is not going to give an excuse for anyone who misuses all those three things. It tells us that God is in the business of expanding his influence, his kingdom here on earth. And he has given each and every one of us a talent, a time, and he has also given us resources. And one day we'll stand before him and we'll have to give an account of all our actions. And this manager, he receives a report from his employer and his employer tells him straight that I hear that you've misused your position as a manager and I'm about to fire you. In other Bible versions, it says there is going to be an audit of your work so that and on the findings of the audit, you will be found guilty. Point number two that we can take from this story is, even if this manager misused his time, the Bible tells us that he went out there while he still had the position and he went to all the debtors, all those guys who owed his master uh, some money and he went to them and he asked them how much do you owe the master and then he gave them a 50% discount. And he did this so that he can win favor with them 
And I want you to jump to verse 8 quickly and listen to what, um, and listen to what the rich man or the employer said. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. This is interesting. So the rich man or the employer, when he heard that his manager went out there and gave discounts to all those who were owing the rich man, he thought to himself, wow, this is quite wise. He actually admired what he had done. And I want to extract this. Sometimes some of us have misused the resources that God has given us. But if we can apply wisdom in redeeming what was lost, God has grace to forgive us and God can admire the demonstration of wisdom in redeeming what was lost. Hallelujah. And I love this because this is a story of grace. So even if God is demanding for an account from your life, but if you can apply wisdom to redeem what was lost, God is faithful to forgive all of us. I mean, this rich man or this employer, he was ready to fire this manager. But when he realized what he had done after, um, 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 after he came to know that he's about to be fired, he actually backtracked He actually um, admired just a demonstration of, um, um, yeah, um, uh, of wisdom. Hallelujah. Now, let's conclude um, from verse 8. It says here, the rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of light. This is so sobering. The children of this world, they are so shrewd. In other words, they are so wise in dealing with the worldly resources than the children of light. And this is the assessment of Jesus. Verse 9. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal home. I love this. And this brings me to point number three. What Jesus is basically saying, he says, use your resources to gain favor with friends so that they can welcome you into an eternal home. What does he mean? In other words, what Jesus is basically saying, he's saying use your resources to win favor so that you can influence men and women um, 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 in the principles and in the things of God. In other words, use your time, use your resources, use your talent, use your gift, use your charisma to influence your friends, your family members, your neighbors and your colleagues so that you can win them into the kingdom of God. And Jesus says one day when they die and they go to heaven, when you meet them in heaven, they will welcome you and they will appreciate how you have used the resources that God has given you to win them over into the kingdom of God. So God, when he gave us all these resources, he's giving us these resources so that we can win favor with men. That's what God is basically saying. Jesus is saying, you are giving time, talent, and resources so that you can influence all those you, uh, you encounter in your life so that you can win them into the kingdom of God. In other words, use your resources to influence all those you know. Hallelujah. And finally, in verse 10, it says, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. This really just finishes me. In other words, all of us are going through a test. It doesn't matter how small or how big a responsibility you have in your life, but it is a test to test if you are faithful with the little that God has given you. The platform that God has given you, how faithful are you with it? You know, most of us are so hungry to move on to the next level, but we fail to demonstrate our faithfulness in the lower level. And the principle of God is simple. If you are faithful in small things, then you pro you've proven to yourself and to God that you'll be faithful even in bigger responsibilities. And this is the truth of life. 
if you fail to be faithful in the small uh, um, um, things that God has given you, if you fail to demonstrate responsibilities in the small things that God has given you, how then will God make you uh, uh, responsible for much bigger things? So we need to demonstrate that we are faithful in small things so that we can end the right for God to promote us to be faithful in much bigger responsibilities. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this message. We thank you for the truth that is found in your word. We thank you, O oh God, that you always challenge us. I thank you that your truth is practical and it is tangible. And I pray that we can apply it in our lives so that we can reap the fruits of your truth. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let's connect again as we embark on this brand new series titled The Parables of Jesus.